Hi, this is DG Dino from Jinxer Games, and this is Data Maker Tutorial Part 2. Here I have another sample, and we will be using the XML Get Next Node List Properties action. And I'm using this XML file. So I'm getting all the item information in the list element, which are these three and save it in a store reference. Uh, the node count I only added so you can see how many it has found but it's not needed to use here. Then with the XML get next node list properties I am gonna go through each item that has been found and I will get the type which is the name of my prefab game object and I will get the position to set the position of my object and I will get the material to change the material of my object. I also have a reset bool uh, here to reset this action if it's set to true. Then I will use a custom action called resources load that you can find here on the ecosystem just uh, search for resources and get the action and I will load my object into the scene I have a weight uh, which I have added just for the tutorial then I use resources load again to get my material by the way you need to place your things that you want to load into a resources folder like I have here then you can use this uh, resource load action. Then I use uh, set position to set the position on my object and then I will set the material on my object and then I will loop this again with the, uh, with the next object until all objects are done. Now let's play and see what happens. It gets the cube, change the material, it gets the sphere, and change the material, and it gets the cylinder, and change the material. Now in the next step, I'm going to set, uh, to set the reset value to true then find my objects and destroy them and start the loop over again when I trigger the replay it will set the reset bolt to true and that will reset the XML get next node list properties and the action will start from the beginning again even it was not done yet like I show you here when it first reset it starts again from the first item now in this setup I'm getting my objects in a random order here I get the items from my list I need to use the XML result and store into a string. I'm not sure uh, why store reference does not work here. Might be a bug and might work later on. So if if that is true, I will comment this on this video when this is fixed. And I'm getting the node count, which I'm gonna need this time. Next, I'm going to use a custom action again and called get next random int, which also can be found on the ecosystem. On int pool count, I have set the index value. So if I have found three items, my pool count pick uh, will be three. And 
when I play this it will pick number one, two or three. Once a number has been picked it will be removed from the pool so if it picks number two then on the next loop it can only pick number one or three. On in theory count I have also set the index value so if I have found three items this will loop three times. If I put a 2 as a value in it, it will only loop 2 times. And I store it in my int variable called next int. Then I'm using XML select single node. And for the, source, uh, for the source, I will use the result string variable. On the XPath query, I am searching for the item on the row given by my next int variable, which I have set up as underscore zero underscore. So that is on the result from this get next random int. So if the result is two, uh, this will be two. So it will get the second item. Next, I'll be using a string switch, which will compare my string variable. As you can see, if it's uh, the result is Q prefab, it will go to box, and spear prefab spear, and cylinder cylinder. Then I use create object to create my objects on the given positions. And then I will loop it back until it's done. Now let's play and see what happens. Oh, it looped now only two times because, yeah, I have set this to two. So I'll change this so to uh, also to index. And play it again. And you can see now it started two, three, one, and again, and now it started three, one, two. So, as you can see, it's giving different results every time. Okay. With Data Maker, we can store our results directly in different value types. Here you can see the XML file uh, I will use. Uh, the attribute names can be set to anything. Uh, so, for example, instead of bool, I could change this to crazy, uh, which is true. But, okay, I will put this back to bool. And so you don't have to. Uh, uh, put bool here if you want this to be a bool you can put anything and still it can be a bool and just the same with all the other uh, attributes you can see here I have set a bool <coughs> sorry a float a color And int, a quaternion, a rect, string, vector 2, and a vector 3. On the second uh, item, I have a game object, a material, an object, and a texture. These four types you can also get directly, but uh, they are a bit more complicated and I don't know exactly how to do them myself. 
So if I figure them out, I will make a separate tutorial for those values. I am using XML get uh, select single nodes and I'm getting all the different values and on the variables I have enabled inspector so you can see them here now let's play this and I will go over the different values so I have my bool here and it's set to true then I have color the color has to be set as an RGBA value and not a 32-bit color. If you want to know the value to uh, set uh, these values, you can use the custom action uh, convert color to string, which also can be found on the ecosystem. And now you can see the value here is the standard value that you, that we get when we look here. Then when you uncheck the 32-bit color, you see we get a different value. And this is the value we need to set into the XML file. Now the format, we have to change this uh, capital C to a normal C and then we can use this value and copy and paste it into your XML file and then this should work next up we have float right here then we have the int and then we have the quaternion for quaternion, we also need a different format, and which you can get also with uh, this action: convert quaternion to string. And don't forget to change the capital Q to a regular Q, and then you can get the result of this value and place that also in the XML file next we have rect also for this you we have a convert uh, action and we have a string a vector 2 and a vector 3 on the ecosystem you can find several convert actions which you can use uh, as you like and if you need to add values to your XML file which I will explain on the next part uh, you can use these to uh, make it a valid value as you can see there are many uh, convert actions so I think about all of them are here so this was the second part of the data maker tutorial i hope it helped you out and thank you for watching